<laughs> I believe we're live, but I never trust it until I see it over here. Because sometimes I'll be talking. You get to see us make total I'll be you know what to have I'll be talking because I think I'll be talking because I think we're live and then like I watch the video later and it, it's like yeah. you know, it didn't start to like fifteen seconds into it. Anyway, y'all what's up everyone? No, it's been what's a, up guys. It's been a while since I've been live on my channel. Um my friend here. Some of you have been asking, is this Randy? Because I said my bunkmate. This is Prison Mike. My name is Prison Mike, if you know anything about the office. I'm Prison Mike. So uh, I took care of him. <laughs> yeah, Randy was never my bunkmate in prison. He was on he had a he had a Randy had a had a different bunk. That was this in guy, jail, wasn't it? Hmm? That was, was it? Yeah, it was yeah. actually in jail. Yeah. Um uh and uh, in the course of jail and prison, you end up mm -hmm. with a bunch of different bunk mates, but you definitely have the right with probably like two and a half years oh, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, so it was a while. So two and a half years, mm -hmm. uh, this guy was my bunk mate. Anyway, hadn't seen uh, my kids and stuff for a while, so he's visiting. Yeah. <laughs> and whenever, whenever you meet up again, you just end up talking. Hey, remember when that happened? Remember when that happened? Yep. Remember when this happened? Remember when that happened and stuff? And so anyway, I know, you know, we were eating earlier, and I was like, "What? We should just go live. We should yeah. just go live and, and, and do some reminiscing live yeah. on air, spin some tales for you guys, yeah. and uh, let you know what the real deal yes. is." So yeah. this is so this is uh, this is Kane, and they they've never heard you talk before, but you sound weird to me. <laughs> I sound weird. No, you to sound you. weird with your. Oh, oh okay, yeah. yeah. Maybe I should explain something to to the audience. Uh, I just had oral surgery done. Um, my mouth is extremely sore, uh, and I do sound lispy from time to time. I apologize. You know that's a problem if anybody's using closed captioning. You know, my my bad. But uh, you yeah, know, yeah, because I'm used to you talking like this the entire time. Well, you know, blah, 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 like blah, this, blah 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 blah. All right, so uh, prison mics, boys. So we'll, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and share some stories. Uh, most of them you guys probably never heard before. Stuff, uh, basic prison stories and stuff like that. Anyway, just if you want to listen to them, <laughs> who doesn't want to listen to prison? They're very entertaining. There are entire there are entire YouTube channels that are just prison stories, right? Yeah, yeah, they have yeah. whole uh, yeah. actual channels yeah, yeah, yeah. dedicated to prison life. I yeah. saw I saw there's like I a, avoid them like a I plague. saw a woman has one now. I saw a woman what? just because. Yeah, just because uh, I have no idea. I guess it's being recommended because because I have, I have clicked on the prison videos before, right? Right, right. Like, I, like, like you you see a video, will you get your wig split if this? And I'm like, does this guy actually know what he's talking about? So I'll click on it, stuff like that. And so now it recommends all these uh, prison videos and stuff. Um, now we know what you do in your spare time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tell a little prison stories, and we're gonna explain to you guys how not to get your wig split if you get locked up and don't end up in prison. Yeah, don't be <laughs> stupid. Don't be yeah. stupid. Um, so anyway, little background about you. Okay. Um, we were we were in prison together for a few years. Yes. Back in the 1990s, but you'd been locked yeah. up <laughs> several years before me. Yes. Uh, so you were considered. But by, by the time I was in there, you were considered like old school convict. Yeah, um, I I already not old old school because they were actually old men who've been locked up yeah. 20, 30 years. I've done and stuff. six and a half or seven yeah. years before I met you. I know six years, six years before I met you. Yeah. yeah. So then, um, so anyway, you can go into as much or as little detail as possible. But what'd you okay. do, man? What'd you do? What'd you do? All right. What'd you do? Okay. Look, everything on paper or anything that's said, it always sounds awful. Okay. All right, I'm just going to say it. Look, I was in for armed robbery. I was in for possession you know, of a firearm and a robbery. You know, stuff. Uh, kidnapping because I took the guy hostage. Uh, let me explain myself a little bit, though. You know, there, there was a situation, basically, that was involved that uh, a young girl had been assaulted. Nobody was doing anything. The police weren't doing anything. Her own family, her own father. So I decided to take it into my own hands. And, well, I went a little too far. So... Um, yeah, so I ended up in prison. I ended up in maximum security. So were, that were, was before I met you. What were all your charges? Uh, let me see. Armed robbery, abduction, two uh, charges of gun in the commission of a felony, and um, I think that was about it. Sounds <laughs> like a real loser. Um, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Anyway. <laughs> oh, actually, let me turn down this volume slightly. It looks like we're clipping a little bit. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, so you've been locked up a while before mm -hmm. me and then 
I get to Stanton Correctional Center. I was sent to Fresh Stanton. Fish. Yeah. <laughs> I was sent to Stanton Correctional Center specifically because they had a mental health mm. area there. That uh, uh, Stanton used to be, um, what was it? It was Eastern State or Central State Psychiatric. It was no, uh, it Central to... State. It was Central State. That's not for Virginia. No, I, a, I used to be at Central State. No, Western hospital. State. Western, Western State. State. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was at Central State as yeah. a mental hospital. And then when they were sending me to prison, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it said uh, may need mental health treatment. And they sent me to Stanton. But this place had been, uh, before it was a prison, it used to be a mental health facility going back like to the 1800s. Also a Civil War hospital. Also, a um, they also held prisoners of war there mm. uh, briefly. Yeah, so that, there was like a, a great, there's a big history. graveyard there. No, oh, there's a graveyard right across the street from the record. It was yeah. it was actually a creepy place because, on the one hand, it's a prison, mm -hmm. but they left all the buildings and stuff. Yeah, they didn't use the they didn't use the dilapidated buildings and stuff except for like storage, like storing supplies and stuff like that. But, and industries, remember the industry, uh, the second industry building was in that dilapidated yeah. uh, by the. Uh, matter of fact, matter of fact, yeah. I actually saw on one of those, uh, one of those like those 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 group of dudes that go around uh, looking for haunted places. Yes, because Stanton was closed down, right? Mm -hmm. But now I saw one of those videos where it's those guys went into now. Did you know that it's condos? Yeah, yeah. No, I've mm -hmm. seen it, it but not not, not the old crap buildings. No, um, no, they're still. Up, yeah, yeah, the building we were in that is now that is now condos, and I saw that and I was like, Two building. Yeah, I, got, yep. I was like. You guys live in there, man. You know what was going on up in there. <laughs> you know the yeah. stuff that was going up on in what's now your bedroom, man. Yeah, mur <laughs> yeah, murders and murders happen like in the bathroom. Of, I mean, literally, when it's a mental health place, yeah. there's like two murders in yeah. there. God knows how many assaults yeah. in the prison and well, you, you know, it's crazy. Else, uh, you you know? remember because uh, I did welding as my trade, and right. there was that tower there. Mm -hmm. Up on the in that tower, there was this wooden bathtub with. Uh, a thing that would close it, it would close over top of it. I know nothing about this <laughs> no, no. here. There's a wooden there's a wooden bathtub up there because I because I worked in the building. Right, right. right. So th there's this wooden bathtub mm -hmm. with an enclosure that slides over top of it, and it has a hole in the middle. And I was asking what the heck that was for. Don't tell me that was a neck hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd stick you in there if you were bucking, right? If you went, if you went crazy, because it's a mental health hospital, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, things were a bit, a bit more crude back in the day. But if you were really, if you're really bucking and, and flipping out mm -hmm. and hitting people and stuff like that, they'd stick you in that tub, close the hole over, <laughs> close it over your heads, and then fill up the tub with ice water, right? Until you yeah. calm down. Mm -hmm. Until you calm down. Eventually, you're eventually you're nice and calm because you're. It's you're, either you're hypothermia, getting, yeah. death, or you're calm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's that's the sort of creepy stuff was going on in there. And then they had the the old building where i've been in there a yeah. bunch of times because they used it as storage to store like giant boxes mm -hmm. of paper towels and stuff but there'd be like um you know holes in the floor and stuff like that and then i heard i don't have verification for this but i just heard from uh from the people who had to clean out yeah uh like the the i, I guess the sewers or something like that yeah. underneath mm -hmm. and they said there were all these like they've like found fetus skeletons and stuff like that from like because they're they're, they're yeah back well, in yeah. the day back mm -hmm. way you know 100 years ago yeah um i don't know how they didn't decompose and stuff but they said that Again, I can't verify. They just said that's what well, they found. Well, bones can last an awful long time, you know. So, yeah. I mean, so, uh, I mean, that's believable, especially yeah. in a cold, dark place. Yeah, so know. these would have been basically yeah, women, women mental old. patients who are getting uh, pregnant in a mm. mental hospital. And, and you know how they away. got pregnant. Yeah, yeah so that'd be, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's uh, it eventually became a prison, but they had uh, a mental health area given its, uh, its background. So I, I got <laughs> sent <me>. there. <clears throat> I got sent there, and then um, my first bunk mate. You remember Grover? He's one of the old guys. Yeah, he Grover was Harris, old, older, uh, older fella. Yeah. yeah, he was. Uh, there were there were cut him and and Buck, and then there was a dude named Rudy. But those are like old <laughs> <Good> men. Old, <Buck. laughs> old men in prison is basically people who've been locked up like fifty years of their life. Um, you guys would still, love to meet like some a, of these people. Trust me, they were characters. Yeah, you know, as many dangerous people that were in there. There were some real characters in there, <laughs> some real yeah. characters. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but you know. <laughs> uh, uh, Bernice said, "What age?" Uh, asking me, uh, "What age did you go to university?" Since you spent time in prison, so I went. 
to prison, then I got God, out and went, went to, back you went to, to school. school. It was a full time so. job, I think, didn't you? Pretty much, yeah. you were yeah. in school. I, did, for I went to school years. For, for, for a long time. So I, I, was, mean, in, I, visited you I was in a my mid. Times. I was in my yeah. mid twenty. I was in my mid twenties when I uh, when if you're if you're thinking about like when I met Nabil and stuff like that, that would have been. Oh, trust prison, trust me, he he's got his schooling. I yeah. I've never seen the man go after <laughs> you know college the way he did. Yeah. You know, I'm proud of him. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, so anyway, uh, my first bunkmate, here's how it works, right? You go to prison. I mean, it, it could be different in different areas, but uh, where we were, mm -hmm. you go to prison and they, they stick you on a top bunk. And then you go on a waiting list for a bottom bunk, right? Because eventually, you know, inmate an inmate on the on a bottom bunk, people want, generally want to be on a bottom bunk. It's better. Um, I just unless agree. you're this guy. Um, <laughs> So you could see everything from a top bunk. You see, Mike. Yeah, you, I know. You, you I know, I, I know why you were on the top. I know you <laughs> yeah. why you were on the top bunk. Come on. But, um, <laughs> yes. but generally, if you're like climbing up and down every, well, you know, yeah, all the time. that does get old. <laughs> so they put you on a top bunk, but then you go on a waiting list for when a bottom bunk comes open. Then you're offered the spot, and basically you move up the list as people get mm -hmm. bottom bunks and so on. And if it gets to you, and they offer you the bottom bunk, they say, "Hey, here's the bottom bunk over here. Do you want it?" You can say no. If you say no, your your name goes to the bottom of the list, and you start yeah. over. Um, Mm -hmm. Waiting. So anyway, my first bunkmate was Grover Harris. Uh, I don't know how I don't know how much you were around Grover. That dude's Enough. actually evil. Yeah. That dude is evil. Like we, you say, old man, you think, oh, nice old man, grandpa. No, some mm -hmm. old people are evil. Old people who've Excuse been me. evil all all mm -hmm. their lives. And this dude was like saying the some twisted, twisted stuff. And you, there are people yeah. you look and you go, this is why this dude. I, I think there are some mental issues there too yeah. with Grover. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, anyway, I. Man, did not they like him. They use statements a dumping dumping yeah. place. And and, and the thing is, you can't you know no one's, people generally aren't going to beat him up because he's because no guy. So he gets yeah. away with saying all this sick stuff, talking about the sick stuff he's 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 going to do and stuff. Um, what like, and matter of fact, it was, <laughs> this is kind of a messed up story. Uh, guys, it's a different environment in prison, so don't hold any of this against me. I'm not condoning this behavior, but uh, you have to realize that this is. I mean, if I came to visit. We got to talking, and we thought that this was definitely some input that, you know, you guys would be find interesting, yeah. at least. I mean, Dave is, you know, has made quite a quite a name for himself, and, you know, it's, I'm, I'm proud to call him my brother and friend yeah. and my brother in Christ, you know, but you know, we do have some very good stories to tell you guys, you know. We've known each other forever, you know, so, yeah, yeah. we hope you enjoy this, you know. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... So Grover, and that, that should tell you how old he was. I mean, he's not, he wasn't tremendously old, but he was like mm -hmm. 60s, probably 60s old, uh, and which would have made him, for the 90s, he would have been born in like the 30s and stuff. Yeah. And that's when, I guess, Grover was still a name, because people generally don't use the name Grover anymore. Grover Cleveland? Yeah, the last time I heard Grover, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this dude's evil and stuff. Anyway, it would be count time, and we were all the way in back of the dorms, an 88-man dorm. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they had dividers in, in between like uh, four double bunks and so on. And so we were all the way in the back. Uh, this bef this before I was bunkmates with Kane. So I was all the way in back, and Grover was my bunkmate. But uh, uh, <laughs> so they call count time, but then you have to stand there for like five minutes before they get to you, and the guards are counting everyone. And pretty much every day, they call. I mean, every multiple times per day, they would call count time. I would I would we, I have to jump down off my bunk, and we just stand there and wait. And every time Grover would turn around and look the other way, I would pretend like I was going to kick him, right? Because just the, the other guys in the, in the place who all knew this guy is sick and evil, they would crack up laughing because I'm, I'm, I'm about, I'm like drawing back like I'm about to kick him, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I would like start to kick him, but I would like, I would like pull back right at the last second and everyone would laugh and he'd turn around, <laughs> he'd turn around and I'd, I'd just be looking off into space and stuff. Anyway, uh, <laughs> one day I was doing, <laughs> I was doing that and uh, everyone's looking at me and every time he turns around, I go like, I'm going to kick him. And finally I like took a couple steps back and like <clears throat> skipped forward like I was going to kick him. And I, I actually went to kick him and I, I planned to pull back, right. but I had on those, you know, those heavy shower shoes. These yeah. aren't, these aren't like soft little flip-flops. They're heavy those sandals. Those brown ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you might, it seemed like dollar stores, <laughs> but these things were like rocks. Yeah. So I pretended I was going to, I was going to, I was going to kick him when he wasn't looking <laughs> and I went up and I stopped, but my, my, my sandal went, went flying and kicked him right in the butt. Right. <laughs> And so he turns. He turns around. Called a projectile yeah. Yeah. butt so, kicking. So he turns. He turns around and he looks at me, and I'm just. I'm standing there, but I mean, I, I got. I'm missing one sandal, and one just him. So he thought. I. He thought I did. Anyway, he grabs all my stuff off my bunk and throws it on the floor. 
<laughs> and it's funny because I mean he's an old man, so I mean, and, and I was, I was being do? a jerk. Yeah. yeah so, but uh, uh, anyway, that was my bunkmate. I did not like my bunkmate. And one day they come, uh, officer comes in. I believe it was Fix. We'll talk more about Fix later. He was a pretty cool dude. I feel you it was Fix. Yeah. Yeah. So Fix came up and said, um, Fix came up and said, uh, Hey Wood. <laughs> That's how we talk. There were like two redneck uh, guards there, but uh, Fix oh, came up. Oh, he was country. I yeah, mean, he was, was country. 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 Hey, hey boy, boy. Monk over there, it's under K. You do, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> and at first, and he it, had me rolling when I yeah. first got there. He was funny. I mean, there, even in such a horrible experience as prison, you do find those little gems, those little moments, you know, of, of something that's extremely hilarious or extremely, you know, heartfelt or whatever and stuff, you know, or ridiculous, you know, which <laughs> Pix was all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he was going, like him and Half, the other, the other, the other country oh, guy. God. Whenever that they was would, his running partner. Whenever yeah. they would, uh, whenever they would be counting, they, they would, they would sort of walk down to the end. And as they're walking away, I would go, uh, I would go, Hey, Half, how about after work we go over to the monster truck and tractor rally? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and he knew it was me. He go, he go, yeah. F you would. He'd yell it at the uh, mm -hmm. end of the room. Anyway, Fix comes up to me and says, uh, uh. Hey, hey, Wood, you got a uh, got a uh, bunk open. It's under Kane. I was like, oh no, man, I got to go to the bottom of the list because I did not want to go anywhere near this dude. That was like the evil demonic area. There was always a big cloud of smoke over there. That was the area where all the drugs were. That was the tattoo spot. That was the tattoo spot because because this, this this guy is the designated tattoo artist. Um, for uh, you couldn't for our dorm. Yeah, you couldn't tell or anything here. Sorry, getting yep. used to these cameras, as you can see. Yeah, you know, yeah, really slaved out and stuff. So know. this was the tattoo artist, and uh, and so that's where the drugs were. And I was like, God, I don't want to be over there, man. I don't want to be <laughs> I was not over doing there. drugs. <laughs> <laughs> this is... That's where the crack was. That's where all the meth was. Um, so I was like, No, I don't want to go over there. And then eventually, I was like. What that man? What maybe I'm supposed to go over there? Maybe this is <laughs> maybe I'm supposed to be over there. Maybe maybe I get I, I'm offered this spot uh, because I'm supposed to be in that bunk. And so anyway, I accepted the spot and then uh, I went over there. And, he paid well for protection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, just kidding. Just you, kidding. You, you remember when I first went over there? Look, I'd be over there. He tried to come in so tough. I'd be, I'd be you know, big chest all out and stuff, you know, coming in. I thought, oh, boy. <laughs> I said, man, I'm going to have something to deal with here. <laughs> uh, sh sha we here said, why you went to prison, Sir David? Uh, you can mm. check. That's a long story. We're not focusing on that right now. But if you go to my channel, the video on my homepage of my YouTube channel uh, explains uh, my whole my whole background story. I go into a ton of detail. I uh, greatly um, recommend it too. Um, it's it's a it's a very very sincere story, and I really believe it'll touch your hearts. Uh, so that, there's my, you know, kind of uh, you know, I guess you know, accolade to Dave, you know, and stuff. Uh, I, I, the things I've seen this man go through, and the things I've seen, you know you do over the years and stuff i mean yeah this he is truly he is an amazing man yep. you know and uh, right. you really really need to check out his channel uh -huh. you know it's it's possibly important. the greatest youtube channel ever now give me the 20 that video bucks. is the greatest ever are you paying uh, me an hour after the video so Rada said david you have tattoos <laughs> yeah yeah i got some this guy this guy did that one it's a resur it's a resurrection scene uh anyway enough about me do you remember i went over <laughs> when i got the bunk i'd be over there i'd be reading <laughs> I'd be sitting there reading my Bible <laughs> and watching out for the cops so I could tattoo in peace. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. So you and, and you be you be sitting there going, you know, you should uh, read the Bible on acid. Uh, the words will come off the page and speak to you like they've well, never saying, spoken yeah. before. <laughs> and then I'd be like, no, I'm not doing that, man. <laughs> And you go, I'll you started, slipping into you started tree. saying that you started saying, you go, I notice you always keep a glass of water beside you. He don't did. worry. Don't worry. One day I'm going to slip some into your water and you're going to understand the Bible. Like you've never understood it before. And I was like, look, man, if I ever start feeling weird after drinking my water, it's on right there. It's on right there. Uh, so uh, anyway, that, that's, uh, that's needless uh, to say, I never did it. You yeah. Know, so that, so that, that's this guy when I, when I, when I go over there, um, and you had all this racist crap all over you. 
all this Aryan, like you, you guys watch movies, you know, these Aryans and stuff like that. You had that white power. You had SS tattooed on your arm. You had freaking SS. Yeah, I'm tattooed. trying to get the right angle here. Um, yeah, all of it's covered up. You know, I've, all of it's, you know. Yeah, but, but, but let, me, let me give you a little backdrop, everybody, some backdrop to that so you don't think that I'm some rabid white supremacist. No, we're going to get to you not being. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically. When you first go to prison, I, I, I went into maximum security because of the severity of my charges, you know, stuff like that. That was a Keene Mountain, um, which is in the farthest part of Virginia as you could possibly get, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And they uh, uh, they sent me there because, you know, I, the violence and, you know, things like that. I was a lot of different person when I was younger, obviously. And, you know, I just, uh, um, you know, you kind of click up, you know, with your mm -hmm. own. And, um, I, that's, that's what I did foolishly at first. And within mm -hmm. yeah, a very short period of time, I realized how stupid it was. And I, I believe, weren't you there when I had got all this stuff covered up? Yeah. It was after you became a Christian, you got all this crap covered yeah, up. Stuff, Matter of fact, look, yeah. dude, that was, that was like one of, <clears throat> I've seen some awesome stuff since I became a Christian. So Nabil, oh gosh, so Nabil, Nabil awesome becoming man. a Christian, yeah. uh, my wife who was an agnostic when I met her, yeah. um, her becoming awesome. a Christian, but you getting all, you know, SS and white pride and stuff like that tattooed, covered up. Yeah. If I don't that believe in like, it, why yeah, wear it? That was, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, that was one of the highlights. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool. Get that, get that crap up off you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, that was cool. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, we start off and you were, uh, you were kind of a pagan at first i think i think on some balance level, theory that was my thing remember the balance theory yeah i had the balance i don't remember theory. i know for you good, to, I, for I, good I, there had to be evil for I, evil there had to yeah, be yeah i know good. you used to there, spout all this weird stuff to me yeah yeah i see how much you listened yeah but <laughs> 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 well good thing you didn't listen to me right but um yeah I, I at that point i had subscribed to a balance theory that everything kind of evens itself out you know i guess mm -hmm. sort of was my philosophy you know that um as much good you do as much wrong as you do somehow balances out in other words i was still under that you know um i guess you have to earn your grace mm -hmm. you know or whatever through good deeds or mm -hmm. whatever i have more good deeds like the balance scale like in the egyptian lore or whatever you know where they put a feather on the scale and your mm -hmm. sins you know i mean that's kind of where i was at when i met dave you know mm -hmm. and that's when we started talking yeah and we became uh, friends first and then we yeah. you know more yeah. like arguing yeah debating yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i mean we constantly i mean hotly sometimes mm -hmm. debated you know mm -hmm. i mean it sometimes went out for hours all night yeah. sometimes you yeah. know um i grew up in church uh mm -hmm. dave didn't i grew up in church so i knew all the right words you know i knew all the right things to say all the right arguments and all but i didn't believe them you know mm -hmm. that was that was the problem you know i wanted to live life my way i wanted to do things my way and you see where it got me it got me right into a prison cell mm -hmm. you yeah. know so apparently my understanding was definitely not the lord's understanding at that point in my life mm -hmm. So I believe that Wood was definitely brought back there to my little hell hole for a reason in prison. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, God works with purpose, you know, in everything he does. So. Yeah. And uh, just for <coughs> some of you keep asking, is this Randy? No. This dude is the opposite of Randy. <laughs> no, not Randy, guys. <laughs> my the, name's Kane. K-A-N-E, -E, like the wrestler. The, the Same precise spelling. opposite yeah. of, what, you know, of what Randy is like. <laughs> yep. Excuse me, guys. All right. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, so All right, you ended up becoming a Christian eventually. Yes. And we had some fun time. You, but you actually, you actually went through a bunch of stuff. Cause it was like right after that, yeah. that your dad went to the hospital. Yeah. And then he passed away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I lost my dad while I was in prison. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it was a very tumultuous time in my life. I mean, obviously and stuff, I mean, but that, that really didn't have anything to do. I mean, that happened after actually I had, you know, had dedicated my life to Christ and stuff. You know, I lost my dad. Um, a lot of other things happened in my personal life. You know, I guess it's that thing, you know, that once you, you know, once you give your life to Christ, uh, the enemy is not too happy about that. And it's going to come at you, you know, with everything he's got, you know, and stuff. So I didn't really understand that at that point. And I couldn't understand why bad things kept happening to me, you know, like, you know, family dying, you know, friends dying, things happening out, you know, on the street that I had no control over, you know, stuff like that. You know. mm -hmm. um, and uh, just so you guys know, Kane ended up becoming 
one of my best friends of of all time. I mean, yeah, yeah absolutely, so, Dave. So, Dave, so I would I would drive to see Dave no matter where he was in the country. You know, yeah. Even oh. though he lives in you know in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> I'm still here. So, <laughs> um, give him my address, why don't you? Well, so, yeah, oh yeah, it's Alaska, <laughs> Alaska, yeah. Juno, yeah. <laughs> So uh, 121 Main Street. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you. I mean, it'll it'll take a little bit. Of oh, a I'll story. give you my address, but you yeah. show up, you're gonna have some real problems on your hands. <laughs> um, so uh, you uh, you this will take this will take a little bit mm -hmm. on on how <laughs> how I realized. Yeah, guys, you meet you meet a few friends in your lifetime where you could say. This is a guy I would trust with the lives of my kids if someone was about to kill them. And this is a guy, if I were, if he were driving down the street and 200 guys were beating me to death, they'd be beating two of us to death. You know what I mean? That's like, it's like you, you meet a couple of people like that uh, in your life. But you remember, uh, sometimes we would like break up fights yeah. back in the yeah. day. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the 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 biggest your one, favorite bathroom uh, your your uh, your your wood to the rescue for the poor guy in the bathroom getting beat up you yeah want yeah to tell yeah that well, one? no yeah yeah so so anyway they're they're you know I was a Christian and it, it sucks because there's this there are these two sets of rules right yeah there's here's what I'm supposed to do as a Christian mm -hmm. and here's what I'm supposed to do these these are like, this is like the, the the code of the the yeah. convict and so on the, the rules you're supposed to follow um, but basically if a, if a fight broke out I would try to I would try to break it up. And I would, I would just basically run up in in the middle of the two guys, uh, figure out which one is most reasonable or which one I knew I knew better, and I would uh, just get in his face and be like, "Come on, man, you want to go home? You want to go home? You want to go home? You don't want to do an extra? You want to do an extra two years for this guy? Do you want to do two more years for this guy right here? Do you like him that much, right?" And uh, <clears throat> it would it would pretty much work. So there was uh, Dex and Floyd. Those guys fought. Those guys were fighting. They they, they well, fought Dex from the big, bathroom. Big, big yeah, boy if you guys too. see <laughs> you guys see Predator. <laughs> um, if you see Predator, make him invisible. The guy, the guy, no, 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 not not the Predator. In in the movie Predator, there was a guy, Bill Duke. I forget what his name was in Predator, but Bill Duke. Uh, he's the one. Anytime. Oh yeah, guy, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Dex yeah. looked exactly like that guy, except he was way more muscular. He was, mm. he was, uh, he was written. Ripped. And, yeah. So if you can't think of who I'm talking about, keep in mind almost everyone in Predator was big and ripped, and Dex, Dex was way bigger than Bill Duke was. Um, but he got in a fight with this dude named Floyd, and Floyd. Uh, Floyd was, he was a big dude, but he had like a big belly and stuff like that. I didn't find out until later why he was doing so well fighting Dex. He said basically, uh, how, how, you know, for 20 years, for 20 years of his life, he said, we go get drunk on the weekend and you fight and you, yeah. you fight the, you fight everyone in the bar and stuff like that. And I'd be knocking dudes out every, you know, every weekend <laughs> of my life. Um, so they get in this big fight, lockers are flying all over the place and stuff as they're, as they're, as they're going around. Anyway, we break that fight up and stuff and we pulled Dex back and I remember you kept tripping him cause he kept trying to go. <laughs> so I'm standing in front, but he's hard to hold back cause he's massive. And so you kept hooking his feet with your, with yeah. your legs to, to, to trip. Him. Anyway, it uh, works anyway. guys. It does. It yeah. really works. So that wasn't the point, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, broke that fight up. Um, Billy and, uh, and oh, tell Bulls, about the game beatdown that you almost ran into. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, one, one second, one second. And then there was uh, uh, that five percenter they called head. That's not a perverted thing. He just had this giant head. Uh, so people just did, called him head. But or he kept trying to he kept trying whatever, to stu yeah. he he kept he came at he was trying to stab Buck and Buck is one of the old men right. There's like three old men. He was like seventy two years old. You yeah. know, I mean, but just sick enough. He's and, in there, yeah. And so head keeps running, trying to stab him, <laughs> and I'm 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 just all I keep doing is pushing him back, right? I keep mm -hmm. pushing, I keep pushing him back, and it's cool because he could have he could have taken a swipe at me, but he didn't. He's going after Buck, right? And yeah. He just he just kept let you know I just kept pushing him back. But Buck, this old guy behind me, just won't shut up, right? He's like, I'll bust your <laughs> head open with this lock. You come over here. <laughs> and so I'm stuck between. Oh, he would have, too. With, yeah, he would have, too. He tried to, at least. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck between these guys. Anyway, uh, I would always try to break up fights. And some of the time, Kane did not like that because you're not supposed to get it. Basically, it's, it's part of the. I guess you call it convict code. I've heard it called in like classes and so you on. Mind your own is, business. Mind your own you business. If it's, if it's got nothing to do with you, you, you yeah. didn't see it. You weren't there. Stay out of it. Stay out of other people's business. And uh, but I would I, I would still do it. One night where so we would if we were playing chess or something like that, we'd sit down kind of uh, on opposite sides of my bunk. We'd use our foot lockers as uh, as seats, and then right. you got the bed in between. You put a chessboard or something like that. Anyway, mm -hmm. we're we're sitting there, and you could hear a fight start in the bathroom it's a big communal bath bathroom so they're like they're like six 
um, toilets, uh, four urinals, and then like six sinks. There's eight in this, sinks all in this, together. In this yeah. big, uh, big communal bathroom. With and two entrances. Two, entr yeah. two entrances. And you can hear when a fight starts because it sounds like a basketball game. You hear people's sneakers squeaking on the floor and stuff like that if they're if they're fighting. And so we start hearing that, squeak, 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 squeak. and I'm like, hey, there's a fight in the back, a fight in the bathroom. Let's go break it up. And you were like, what? And he, gra he grabs me as I'm trying to get up. And he goes, uh, what? You need to stay out of other people's business, man. You don't understand. You're going you're gonna to get messed up one day for busting into someone else's business and stuff. And I go, no, no, man. No, I'm gonna, someone might need help, right? <laughs> stuff. So you're like, look, what? I told you, stop, stop, stop. And I pulled away, right? And so I bolt, so I bolt over there. And so there are two entrances. I go through the far one and as I'm going in there, I see what it is. It's a gang initiation. It's not a normal fight, right? It's a guy who was a prospect for the gang 187. It's the code for murder, right? Yeah. He's a he, he's a prospect for 187. He's finally getting beaten into the gang, right? And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop you from getting beaten into a gang, right? I'm not I'm not yeah. gonna I'm not gonna jump. You're in idiotic yeah. enough to do that, yeah. then yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so I see what it is because I go on the I go I go through the entrance where the, the this beat this uh, initiation is taking mm -hmm. place, and I I go in there, so I just I stop when I see what when I see what it is, and I'm about to turn around. And through the other door, <laughs> Kane busts in there and he's like, hey, break this up now. And uh, and I turn, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this guy thinks I'm dead wrong. <laughs> he thinks I'm dead wrong for going in to break up this Well, because you went in there. I didn't yeah. have a choice. You yeah, know? that's so what I thought. Yeah, but I had to get your back. That's what you I know? thought was I'm awesome. I'm not going right? to let you go run off by yourself. Again. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I thought was awesome. Because yeah. so Kane comes in there, and I'm like, this is uh, this is yeah. this initiation. Um, but anyway, I was like, I walk out, and I'm like, man, this dude thinks I'm dead wrong, and he's still not going to let the let me get the crap beat out of me, <laughs> you know, by myself. So uh, anyway, uh, well, that's what friends are for. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that that is the definition of true friendship is looking out for each other, and we have certainly did that when I was uh, when I was. Um, when I was incarcerated and Dave had gotten out and stuff, you know, this a little bit later on, uh, you know, one thing you find about prison is almost like it's like dying. Um, everybody forgets about you. It's like you don't exist anymore. And that makes me feel guilty because there, there's still a lot of people back in prison that I was very close to that I don't keep in contact with because of life. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have things we need to do. And, you know, it's hard to keep up, you know, with that. But Dave took care of me while I was in prison. He sent me money. He sent me encouraging letters, you know, to keep my faith up. You know, things like that. You you don't find that quality in very many people. You know, and I would certainly suggest that any of you, if you have a close friend like that and stuff, you need to hold on to them. And you need to make sure that it's reciprocal. You know, yeah. that it's reciprocated. You know, I, I, I mean. You know I mean, I mean, I mean th think about this, right? Like, I knew you way before Nabil, way before my wife. Yeah. Um, other people I'm around right now. I mean, apart from a couple... A couple family members yeah I, yeah I mean i don't really talk to many more people than yeah. him and a few other people that's it yeah mm -hmm. um so so you became a christian and uh <laughs> and, well, put up, and put up with my fight fight stopping adventures i learned you're pretty cool and uh we ended up getting into some other adventures because <laughs> It's, oh, still, it's, gosh, still, yes, yeah. it's still it's still weird to think about it right because in prison you have it's still almost unbelievable like yeah. kind of how this whole went down you have yeah. <clears throat> you have christians in mm -hmm. prison you have muslims in prison you have yeah. lots of cults <laughs> you have lots of cults in lots prison. Satanists, Odinists, yeah. you name yeah. it they're there so there's uh but there's a. Uh, you know, there's the five percent. There's the Nation of Islam, and so on. There's the one percenters. <laughs> yeah, those are the bikers. So yeah, I, I, but not not like the regular right? Because these are the killers. You know, the the bad ones. You know. And so, but the the, the ones that <laughs> the ones where I was like, what are you guys? What are you guys doing? You had this. You had the group of devil worshippers, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, do you know where you are? You your little group of <laughs> devil worshippers. You're in prison, right? Uh, and then what was even what was even weirder than that for me was. The, the dude Oaks, oh, who yeah. started a, a, a group of Wiccans there, right? These are witches, everyone. These are these are witches. There's Turn no <laughs> difference between white magic and black magic. Magic is magic, and it comes from one source. You know, come on, guys. You know, so this common dude, sense. This dude Oaks <laughs> was a high priest of Wicca, right? He's a high priest of Wicca who gets locked up. And could this dude have played Gandalf in a movie or not? 
Absolutely. Oh, yeah. He had, he had like long gray hair. Oh, he had the long, long gray blonde beard, beard and the long white hair. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, he looked like something out of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You know, I mean, he did. And so uh, this guy's in and And so you're thinking, hey, this 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 Wiccan dude is uh, is getting people to you know, his little his little spell meetings and stuff. And you're thinking no one's going to do that. But he had he had the characteristics of a cult leader, right? Oh, yeah. And so he, th this is a cult leaders. They have these manipulative personalities and they can make their, even if they're spouting nonsense, they can make it sound good. Yeah. And so he actually ended up getting a couple young guys from the church to start going over to his, to his meeting. And, you know, part of, part of you is thinking, well, look, if you're stupid enough <laughs> to go and follow this, this witch, <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of deserve it, yeah. But on the other hand, you're this thinking, idiot. hey, you know, yeah. these young these young bucks, man, we're we're supposed to be we're supposed to be looking out. We're supposed yeah. to be looking out for them. And so uh, you're the one who actually had the idea for a showdown. Kane's sitting there and he's going, look, these, it, 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 why don't we just why don't we just do it like Elijah did? Why don't we just do it like Elijah did? He said, yeah. uh, he said, look, I'll go down there. I'll challenge him to cast a spell. Right? I'll give him whatever he needs. If he wants hair fingernail clippings if he wants my blood i'll give him my blood he can cast yeah. a spell and uh we'll we'll let everyone we'll let everyone see the results and so uh <laughs> yeah they saw the results all right six months later yeah would so, you uh, like to fill them in <laughs> yeah so so uh so we thought that was a we thought that was a a cool idea but we kept kind of putting it off and never actually going down there because you would have band practice at the same time they would yeah, have their, uh, their, yeah. their meetings and stuff like that. Anyway, eventually... Always something would come up. It was funny, yeah. Eventually, Goob, he was the leader of the devil worshippers, right? <laughs> We're not, we're, we're not, we're not, that's, that's, that was his nickname in prison. He was apparently like marked. We would need at, hours to he explain was apparently, all this. <laughs> he, he was... He was not some Goob was not some weirdo who got involved in Satanism because it was cool when he was growing yeah. up. This guy was like marked from birth by other people who were who were uh, in it and yeah. so on. So he's set aside from birth for for Satanism and so on. Um, he got a real raw deal. Yeah, I mean he really really did. He was messed up. I mean he was a good guy. I I want to I want to make that clear because I don't want to speak ill of the dead, you know, and stuff. I mean just he he was a good man somewhere down deep inside of him. And he struggled. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was with, messed up. Yeah, and you, 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 you'd see him, you'd see him go back and forth. Um, but well, and this was actually one of the times where he, he was like, "Wait a minute, these guys are are nice to me. I'm going to tell them." And he comes up, yeah. he comes up, and he says, uh, <laughs> "He says, look, man, Oaks had me get some some." Uh, I think I think some threads from our clothes or some hair from our heads or something like this. Oaks had me get some hair from the hairbrush yeah. and your toothbrush. Yeah, that's what so, it was. It, yeah. Oaks had me get some of you guys' stuff so he could cast a spell on you because I told him you were going to come down there and challenge him, and so he cast a spell <laughs> to keep you guys from coming down there and challenging him. And I was like, crap! And we haven't been going down there, but it's because of like scheduling stuff, not because not because uh, I you know, know right? he's actually kept us. We had to work our there. schedule around a freaking <clears throat> witch. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> you know? so uh, you had you had band practice, and I was like, I'm just running down there with Dean. Right, it was Dean Hallberg. Oh crap, I shouldn't be using last names because people can look look people up. I guess that's a pretty fair, common enough name that you probably can't find the actual dude. But uh, I go down there with Dean, and I'm like I'm like about to go in there and go. So you cast a spell on us, huh? You cast a spell, wizard. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had forgotten about it. I had completely forgotten about it. Yeah. <laughs> And so, I mean, this is actually this. I mean, getting down there is actually. <clears throat> it was funny up in. I mean, I was kind of, I was kind of annoyed. It's like, wait a minute, you got Wiccans and devil worshippers working together, casting spells yeah, on us. It can't be good. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm like going. To, I'm going down there. Uh, I'm about to go full Elijah on this dude. I go down there, and I'm sitting with all the all the uh, the these young bucks who were there for the meeting. Mm -hmm. And finally, Oaks walks in. It's me and Dean sitting sitting on one side of the table and oaks come uh, oaks comes down he sits in the open spot there and so me and dean are over this is this is oaks me and dean are over there he sits down like this i'm not i'm not exaggerating even slightly he sits down like this and like shielding uh, his yeah, eyes from us yeah, yeah. and his hand is shaking and whenever he's moving his his other hand is shaking i'm not exaggerating like this in, in fact I, I don't even think i can shake as much as he was shaking right um, and so I'm thinking, much, uh, weight he started losing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, that, that's that's when he announced it. We had we had no clue. Yeah. Um, he so he, he he's sitting there shaking, and he says, uh, "I know we were supposed to, 
I have a meeting tomorrow. Um, I just want to say I never use my magic to hurt anyone. And uh, and I'm like, what the heck is wrong with this guy, right? Actually, I just remember he pulled me to the side, actually, right in front of the building that he was in and apologized. Yeah. That's right before he died. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he's sitting there and he's shaking. That's when he announces. He goes, uh, anyway, I'm being taken uh, to a different place. Um, I, was, I was just taken in for an evaluation and I was diagnosed with... Uh, with full full blown lung cancer and two brain tumors, and so that's why he was like he was like terrified. Um, and so he said there were it was were, a rare <clears throat> brain cancer that they rarely ever see. Now that was the thing that's so compelling about yeah. it was the fact of what he got attacked with. You know, I mean, is <laughs> yeah. So they took they took him away, and he was gone for I don't know six months and stuff. And he came back, and there was like this shell of a human being i saw him a couple of times and had no clue it, who it, it was, was sad you're it the one who told me. yeah you're the one who came up to me and said uh and said hey oaks is back and i was like what he Where? was already a really skinny older guy i mean it looked like a but walking cool. skeleton yeah he looked cool at first and then he looked like i mean it was like this pale this pale yeah head. it was and like a, and, a, and a big scar down the middle of his down yeah. the middle of his head and so on and uh so he was there for a little while um and so you you talked to him at some point out in front of the building, and mm -hmm. then uh, and then he was eventually taken to. I was over uh, there getting medication at the med, and he was standing outside because remember it was right by medical. Yeah, it was cool because the, the, the Gilmer brothers. So there were two there were two brothers there. Their their, their last names were Gil, Gilmer, but they were like mm -hmm. hardcore, like nice Christians. But they said they they were going and talking to him uh, as much as as much as they could. Eventually, uh, he was taken to a hospice um, where he where he died. So that was um, that was Oaks. And the other guy in that story was Goob, yeah, the devil worshiper. And so you act, you've actually seen messed up stuff with Goob, right? Oh yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, like as far as putting my hand on the Bible and sitting in court, you know, and swearing to this, I don't know if I could do that. But I'm at ninety nine percent. It was at nighttime. That's beyond a reasonable and, doubt, though. So you could swear on it in court. Well, yeah, I got. Well, yeah, I mean, it's my word. So mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. But but uh, anyways, it was weird. I looked over and it was like he was chanting, but he wasn't making any noise. Mm -hmm. Like his mouth was like, I mean, over moving, you know, kind of. And then I seen his body literally come up a little bit off the bed, you know, and then slowly come back down. Now, if he had just dropped, I would have said maybe he just pushed himself up and fell back down, you know. Mm -hmm. But there is no way. I mean, he was lifted up off that bed and then put back down. Not only that, I believe I also told you the story about the gentleman that slept by the bathrooms. He was literally picked up in the air and thrown to the ground. So, you know, um, I think uh, old Scratch was quite busy mm -hmm. there. You know, the old good old Stanton. There's a lot of weird yeah, stuff that, that was happened a, there. That was a... That was a creepy place. Again, if you, uh, especially if you, you very, weren't here, if you weren't here creepy. earlier, yeah. um, part of this prison was a psychiatric hospital going back to the 1800s Civil War times, and uh, I never had anything creepy. No, I happen, did. Happen. You know, but I mean, other, other people yeah. did, but some of it was kind of. It actually was kind of funny. <laughs> Whatever it was, like to grab people's toes and feet, yeah. and I swear, I thought it was him. I swear, I, I laid awake. I, I was laying in wait for you that night because I, I said, he's going to grab my feet and jump back in the bed. So I <laughs> waited like and waited. <laughs> Somebody, look, something I, grabbed I, my feet. I sat straight up. There was not a single person up. Now, you tell me what that was. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> if I were to do something, I would have, like, taken some toilet paper, put it between your toes, and lit it on fire, and then hid. And then you wouldn't know who yeah, did that's it. Not, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there was creepy <laughs> stuff going on, but but sometimes it would actually be funny. There was that dude who worked in the kitchen. They all knew he was terrified of ghosts. Oh, Remember gosh, that? That yes. Was, uh, this was, okay. Those were two guards that got him. Not in there was mix. two guards and the, the guy who ran <laughs> the uh, entire ki kitchen system and stuff. In fact, it was it was fixing health. Yeah. It was fixing yeah, health. It was, was, fixing was, was yeah. But Anyway, here. So I worked in the stock room at this time. The stock room is attached to the kitchen, so I have all the food back there, and then you give it to the cooks, and they cook it up. Um, but then that's attached to the old building, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the old mental hospital, which, again, we just used 
for storage. That's where right. paper towels and stuff like that would go because they take Dusty, the boxes. Yeah, you know, the boxes covered in sheets. Like yeah, the, you know, like imagine that kind of building. The boxes yeah. <laughs> for you know uh, for uh, an entire prison and stuff. They take up a lot of space, so they'd store them back there in the rooms that weren't like falling through. But uh, so we we. I'd walk back there. There's like an old mm-hmm. organ from the from the 1800s, a, a little church area and stuff like that. Pretty uh, pretty creepy stuff back there when you're looking. It's like you said, this is like when you think about what was going on back in the 1800s. It was like uh, walking place. back in history, literally. Yeah. literally yeah. So uh, they knew one dude was was terrified of ghosts, and it's, it's simultaneously funny, but it's kind of messed up because mm-hmm. again, the guy's legitimately scared and stuff. So. So the, the the guy who George the guy who uh, right, who, right. who headed the uh, who headed the yeah know, the, George the, yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah. I know exactly what you're talking yeah about. so yeah. Uh, yeah he he ran he was in charge he was the manager mm-hmm. for for the uh, kitchen and all that stuff so he tells this guy to come back into the building with him to grab some stuff so come back in here hey we're gonna come back and grab some some supplies and the the dude is like. Take someone else. Take someone else. Right. And so, uh, so he said, "No, come on, come on. I'll be with you and stuff." Anyway, he had Fix back there, and Fix is going, <laughs> and George is back there going, and the guy's going, "What, what was that? What, what was that?" And George would go, "Oh, that's just that's just Bessie. She doesn't hurt anybody. Blah blah blah. She's been here for a century." What, what, right? was so and so anyway, there 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 are things to lock doors and stuff back there. So George actually like locks him in to a room back there and then leaves. And this dude just starts like freaking out, like flinging himself up against it and stuff. So uh, eventually George goes back to let him out. Yeah. And George, George said, cause they're, these guys are all telling the story immediately after, after, after it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't, th- I wasn't there, but right, I'm, I'm right, there when right. all these guys come out and, and say what happened. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw the end of it. I saw the end of it when the guy comes running out, falls down, bolts for the door and says, and, and then starts flipping out saying, you guys are messing with me. You guys are messing with me. And he says that he needs to go back uh, to his room to change his, uh, his pants um, because he had uh, soiled his, his pants. But anyway, I got the story. So George goes back, opens ben the door. Stiller? Really? I'm sorry. And go so, ahead. So <laughs> George said, as soon as he opened, as soon as the door opens, boom, the guy, the guy flies by him, right? He flies yeah. by him running. And, Fix said, he said, I heard him run. Thaw, 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 and, stuff. and so he said, right as he's going by me, I reach out and grab his shoulder. And grab him. <laughs> Fix said, Fix said the dude flipped out, lands flat on his face. Yeah. Jumps back up. Doesn't even look back to see his fix, right? Doesn't even doesn't even look back. <laughs> jumps up and fix said it was like in Scooby Doo where their legs would be moving but they're in they're still in place, right? <laughs> he was getting like a warm up before he started from Yeah, yeah. So so he so he, he he bolts out of there and that's when that's when he, he has to go change his drawers and stuff. It's funny because Fix comes out and he goes, well, what happened? <laughs> yeah. What 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 happened there? And so, uh, anyway, that that's like, anyway, I don't even know why we're telling this story, just because it's, uh, apart from it being a funny because story. Because it's but, hilarious, you yeah. know, I mean, and you because, have to be there kind of thing, there, but it was there were, there were people who were just constantly creeped out by all the, the creepy stuff going on there. With that said, uh, Fix was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, like, Fix was cool because, like, like when Dex and Floyd got in a fight, right? Yeah. Fix was the guy who, he's, he's he doesn't want to write charges, he doesn't want to get people yeah. in trouble and stuff like that. He would come back there and go, guys, is this over? Is this over? Because, and, and, you know, it's cool because he can get in trouble for that. If someone, if, if, if uh, you know, if the warden or something finds out that that you know Fix is letting people slide on fights as long as it's over and stuff because you don't want to get him in trouble, uh, then then Fix would get in trouble. And Half, oh, yeah. Half, I actually locked Half in the stock room. There was a room that had the chemicals in it, right? That had yeah, all the chemicals, yeah. like you know. Yeah, we weren't like allowed back and, in those areas for yeah. obvious reasons. You know, yeah, mean, bleach, floor yeah. stripper. You, you couldn't be around floor stripper unless you're under supervision because people would take a cup of that, stick it in a microwave heat it up and fling it in someone's face and then all your 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 flesh melts off right it's called just real quick for the listeners surprise. i am not randy by the way not randy. I, I know i see not everybody randy i'm kane and stuff you know. and all but yes uh, randy randy was a indeed a great man and stuff and hopefully he'll be sitting with <laughs> david you know yeah, yeah. at some point too <laughs> yeah so uh, uh but one uh, sorry i didn't mean to interrupt oh, yeah, you so, i just seen randy yeah. oh i can't believe yeah. randy did these things <laughs> yeah. oh no 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 randy did not do yeah, any of like, that was randy, me such a jerk <laughs> yeah racist jerk yeah randy was a jerk not me yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just kidding guys <laughs> so half half was uh half had to go in to get some half had to go in to get some chemicals one time and i was the only one back there i was the only one working in the in the stock room and half had to go in to get some chemicals 
and he'd been running his mouth about something. I was like, man, screw this. I'm locking him in here. So I locked, yeah. I actually locked him in from the outside. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, and it was cool because he pretended to be calling back up on his walkie talkie mm-hmm. until I opened the door. And it turns out he was just faking. Like even then, even then, <laughs> right? even then, uh, an inmate locks him in a room filled with chemicals. Yeah. Uh, and he's still, he's still, a, <laughs> we've got, a, yeah. <laughs> he's still not actually going to, going to get me in trouble. Uh, so yeah, Fix was cool. Half was, uh, half was cool. Cool guys. Uh, but that, yeah, back to, by the way, it said Randy's in the chat. Randy's not Randy in the chat. Randy Way, he could be in the chat. Okay. I, I'm oh, just yeah. checking with you. No, no. Okay. Rand, Randy's still locked up. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so, um, much on it, right? <laughs> yeah. so, um, I thought he was that. No, he had 21 felonies. Um, so, uh, Fix, Half, uh, then back to the devil worshiping group. Yeah. So we had Goob. Yeah. He's the leader of the devil worshiper, which I thought was, dude, you not know where you are, right? But there were there were there were a couple of them who were really into it. And there was Rick. Can you verify? This is one of the few people. This is you sometimes. I knew think, you were going to bring up Rick. You sometimes <laughs> think that someone is. Hey, maybe this guy's like demon possessed. But with Rick, that's one of like the handful of people. Let me tell the story. That's one of the on handful of people where I was like, that dude is is possessed by a demon. And I have personal backup for this. Uh, the, uh, on the weekends, they used to let us stay up all night. Friday night, Saturday night. Excuse me for a second. Again, sorry, I just had oral surgery done two weeks ago. Little problems talking Keep sometimes. talking trash so. about me. You're going to need surgery again. Yeah. Oh, snap. Oh, <laughs> burn. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you get my... Oh, no, anyway. Okay. <laughs> no, what happened was, so we could stay up every Friday and Saturday night, all night, whatever. Watch TV, you know, uh, draw, whatever you wanted to do, you know. So I walk out into the day room portion, which, which is in, in between two dorms, huge dorms, you know, on each side. I walk into the day room, and here he is standing, literally in the middle of the day room with his arms down by his sides, just staring at me. And keep in mind, this guy's not really big, but he's covered in cigarette burns that his dad left on him, and cigar and he burns, was, and, and he, was, he could he bench. Was shredded. He, uh, yeah, he was but like 5'7", maybe 120. 150 pounds, and could do 320 10 times on yeah, the bench. Yeah, the most we, I can't the do most we had on the yard. Yeah, the most times. we had on the yard was 320, and you got this this uh, this, this double worship tiny out little there, thing just, out just there. It. Yeah, I mean, just I, I mean, he's repping it like it was 100 mm-hmm. pounds. So he comes up and gets in my face. I mean, literally gets this close to me, and he says, "I hate you, Kane." <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, it's not very much in your life. Somebody just comes right up to your face and says, I hate you, you know? So I'm sort of like, uh, okay, you mm-hmm. know, stuff. And I knew what it was about. It was about me becoming Christian and stuff. And a lot of the guys that I had been running with um, weren't very happy about that decision, you mm-hmm. know, um, as you know, you know. And, um, you know, he said, yeah, I mean, you know, the usual guy stuff, you know, a little banner went back and forth between us. But let me t- let me tell you something, though, that I observed when I when he walked up on me, the heat radiating radiating off him, I would say it was every bit of I'd say 160 to 200 degrees somewhere in there. It felt like that. At least it felt like it opened the oven door. Mm-hmm. And when I looked in his eyes, those were not his eyes. I was looking at something could, very you could, old. You would actually, ancient. you could actually see his face change. He would look normal and be listening yes, to him his, his and all of a sudden, would change. Yeah, he, like like, like somebody it. doing this with their face, and then their face is totally different. And the yeah. the stuff, the stuff that he would say when he changed. Yes, I, I don't even want to repeat it. Like, well, it's even, way even covering beyond up the his intelligence you don't or see this, whatever level. You don't, yeah, you I don't mean, see this. No, it, it as wasn't far as, him. As far as the level of blasphemy <laughs> coming out of yes, his mouth, it's stuff you never heard on. Any movie about devil worshippers and demonic we won't even possession? Talk about the tongue, not like heard, the you've Aramaic heard, stuff. You've not heard and all stuff that, coming yeah. coming out of someone's mouth. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, well, well, he started he started speaking like in another language. I think it was Aramaic. I mean, which you know, we're dating this back now, what four thousand years or so, you know. And uh, and I got to say, that was at one point where I really did call on the Lord to protect me because I felt in very imminent physical danger and. You know, I'm not easy, you know, to beat up, you know what I mean? And this little dude literally has me scared to death because I didn't know what he's going to do. You know, I mean, it felt like a pit bull was like one inch from my face about to bite my face off. I mean, that's what it felt like. But I stood my ground, you know, and stuff. And I told him, I said, do whatever you think you feel is necessary. He stared at me for about another 30 seconds and walked away. 
you know, he came back to himself, I think is what happened, and didn't realize what he was doing standing there. So, yeah, demon possession and stuff like that, I absolutely believe in. And in prison, it's rampant. I, that is not the only example that I have. I have a, many other stories that I could maybe we'll get into at another time. But I have a lot of stories that I've had direct, you know, contact with that. And let me tell you, when you have the Lord in your heart, you have nothing to fear. You know, stuff. I might have been scared, but I wasn't scared. You know what I mean? Like, as far as, you know, spiritually. You, you know. remember... Uh... I don't know if you remember this because we've never talked about it, but uh, there was so the bunk directly across from us. Uh, there was a there was a five percenter who used to be on top, um, but below that there was uh, McKenzie. A- after Seth. after McKenzie, after after McKenzie went, I don't know where he went, but uh, I think he got out or something like that. There was a there was a dude under there, but he started howling and so on. I I, in, rem- I in don't know. Sleep. I don't remember his name, yeah. but yeah, I, don't I, remember I know him either. you're talking about. But yeah. he was. Uh, this was when he didn't last too long. This yeah. was when me, you, and Sky were. We were evangelizing so many people on the floor that one day during a church service, someone said, "What? What? Uh, everyone from from the you know third floor of whatever? Mm-hmm. I don't even remember what building we were in. Uh, what everyone from the third floor of so and so stand up and like." an entire crowd stood up and, and Satterwhite goes, uh, I don't know who's working, but someone's working up there. Right. Yeah. But everyone, everyone is coming to church with us and so on. And, um, <clears throat> and one day this dude, it just starts, just wakes up everyone in the, in the middle of the night, like three o'clock AM. And he's howling in like the, the creepiest sound I've ever heard in my life. But he's like a normal, cool guy. He's not like, he's not Remember like. Remember what else? Used to, yeah. Goober used to do the same thing. Just, yeah, so, just as a point. Yeah, so know. this guy's going, and he's going, you three guys. And he's howling, mm-hmm. you three guys, you three guys. And you we three finally guys. are like, yeah. wait a second. Yeah. I, go over, I, go, I go over and I wake him up and he looks up and he goes, hey, what's up? And I go, hey, you all right, man? He goes, yeah, what's up? And I go, you're like screaming the entire, you woke up the entire dorm. You're like, I did what? And uh, so anyway, so anyway, cre- creepy stuff, but you just get this creepy feeling uh, when it's uh, when it's going on. Anyway, so you had Goob, Rick, Troy, couple of couple stragglers, but they were the main ones. And yeah. uh, the, the the guy used to play guitar, mm-hmm. Steve, that redheaded young buck. And we, yeah. we, we always ended up in these situations where we're trying to look out for these, these young guys who are being preyed upon by, yeah. by other people. But... The devil, he starts getting into the devil worship stuff for a while with them. And then we, like, we get him out of that. And I remember I came yeah. back I came back from the chow hall one day, and you were you were there praying with him. Mm-hmm. Um, you were there praying with him. And he had, like, t- he was man, like... Man, I cried he over t- that. I, cr- t- I, man, cr- I cried over yeah. that guy, man. I mean, <clears throat> even after, man, because, you know, he had AIDS. Remember, I, I don't know if you mentioned Which one? that yet. Yeah. Goop? 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking to him. I'm talking oh, to Steve. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Steve, my bad, my bad. I, I got Follow the Dixon. story, man. So Steve. All right, I got you. Steve, Steve. Steve, oh, would, play, yeah. Steve was, was, would play the guitar. Yeah, the he right got into guy. it. Yeah, he got I into got it. He, got in, he started messing around with them. And then you got him out of it. I came back, and you were praying with Steve one day. Yes, He's crying. okay, okay. Now that makes sense. Yeah, okay, yeah. I got you then. I just I just heard you talk to him. I wasn't trying to jump in there, but he was just talking about how they 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 tricked him into you know going well, along with him and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so this was this was a, a a few days after that. A few days after that, I don't remember if I was walking with you or someone else, but Steve comes running up and he goes he goes uh you gotta help me you gotta help me you gotta help me they're threatening yeah. me they're threatening me Rick is gonna do this and ever he was terrified of Rick because Rick Rick could have ripped him apart. A lot of right? people were terrified of Rick. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> So he's uh, he's going. They're they're gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna do this and that to me. And I said uh, I said uh, I said ah, don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll I'll take care of it and stuff. And that's when oh before then. So going back maybe a week or two before then, I slapped the crap out of Goo right. And I'm not again I'm not condoning this. No, it wasn't his face. It was on his it was on his forehead right. It's when uh, an he, awareness exercise. He t- <laughs> he 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 told people he told people. Because he, he it was in it was in a spot where he was friends with us and he's 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 coming along with us and sometimes he come to church with us and stuff like that. But he bragged to someone that he was a wolf in sheep's clothing infiltrating in order to deceive people, right? Yeah. And uh, so at that point, I was just 
decide I was going to wash my hands of him, right? Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not messing with you. If I can't Dust trust, your if I can't trust off. you, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. I went in the bathroom and I got a bar of soap and I lathered up my hands, right? And I was just going to walk out and show him the soap in my hands, saying, "I'm, I'm washing my hands of you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm done with you." But I walked out and he had this uh, stupid, arrogant look on his face, and so I slapped him on his head, right? So I slapped him back and I said, "I'm done with you." And instead of like getting, he started focus. He didn't know what that was. He thought it was like holy oil or something like that. And he started flipping out. Started going, what was that? He started shit. going, yeah. what was that? What is that? What is? What did you put on me? Right. And, and he and I was burning him. I mean, yeah, because thing is psychosomatic. He probably yeah. thought the holy oil was. Burning I never told. I never told. I never told him. I just walked. I just, <laughs> just walked away. So, so again, guys, not con- not condoning the behavior. <laughs> no. uh, prison is a different environment. It was heat of the moment different uh, against roles, a guy who's like going society. after all these young guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I ended up slapping him in the head. So, uh, anyway, a little later, that's when Steve comes running up and stuff like that. I say, all right, don't worry about it. And uh, I go down, and it's Goob, Rick, and Steve sitting in the cafeteria. And uh, I walk by with my tray, and I go, uh, I go, Goob. I got, I got you know, in his head again. I go, uh, Goob, yeah. I'm going to tell you this one time. You stay away from Steve. Or I'm getting my father after you. I, anyway, I poked him in the head. And he goes, Ooh. <laughs> So anyway, so so I walked away. I walked away and I said, All right, that's done. He goes, Hey, wait, wait, wait. Right. Anyway, yeah. I, I walked away. So our anyway, cop induces in. Yeah. <laughs> I walked back up in the dorm. I don't remember how many it was a couple of us, you, one mm-hmm. or two others. And I was like, guys, let's pray for the Lord to deal with this guy because he uh, he's obviously treating this as a joke. Uh, going after this uh, young guy. Yeah, we weren't getting anywhere, it seemed we, like. Yeah. yeah, we got together, prayed for God to deal with this problem. And uh, it was it was just God. That was just God, beyond get, get our understanding and beyond our comprehension. It was just God, yeah. get rid of him. And it was a couple hours later, the alarm goes off. The mm-hmm. the alarm, that means everyone go back, go back, and, uh, and you're going to be counted. Right. We don't find out until later that... Uh, Troy and Rick that evening tried to escape and Goob didn't try to escape, but he was locked up for planning their escape. And then you heard from Bowles, who was in their little mm-hmm. Satanist seance, yeah. that a demon appeared to them that evening and said, if you go now, if you go right now. Uh, I will help. I don't know why these idiots always came to me, but for some reason, everybody at that prison, (laughs) everybody at that prison and stuff, if they were involved in some kind of horrible thing or whatever, they assumed that I must be down with it, you know, Mm -hmm. because I mean, keep in mind, I came from maximum security to a medium security, you know, Mm -hmm. so I I guess I can kind of see that a little bit, Mm -hmm. but you know, I mean, (laughs) It was ridiculous. They would come running to me with all this stuff, and they would sometimes run the wood with the stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And it's, and it's like I really think it was a cry for help more than it was, you know. You know like they wanted us to take care of their problem, mm-hmm. you know. I I kind of really got that impression on a couple people, mm-hmm. and then like with Goob, and I will say this, you know, to again toward you know his thing. Um, I think he got himself. I think he, I think he signed a contract, kind of in his mm-hmm. mind, that he should never have signed. And it doesn't mean that you, you know. I mean, as far as giving your soul to the devil or whatever, you know, you don't have to go out in the middle of a yard and slaughter a chicken and and say that. You know, it, it's about the way you live. It's about the way you carry yourself. Things like that. And I think Goob got so into the drug scene and so into you know i mean i mean he was homeless i mean yeah, before prison mm-hmm. you know he had a really rough time of it and he turned to the wrong mm-hmm. thing i mean his upbringing yeah, and he, everything yeah, didn't he help said, uh, either uh, so know? so goob goob had aids and he mm-hmm. got it um from can i tell from, i know from, exactly from what it was from drug use no, like, i tell you the exact story and he knew it right he knew the guy had AIDS. He, that he was no 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 and he knows the exact moment he yeah. got it he told me the story hmm. i forgot to tell you this okay well first time premiere here you go this is how goob got this AIDS. Is new stuff this might be the you title didn't know. none of you out there yeah, know this how is premiering goob got knowledge of how goob got aids okay <laughs> what happened was uh he was under an underpass with another individual, I'm not even going to say sex or anything like that. It's just say another individual, and they were getting ready to. Um, I don't know about YouTube's rules. As that, far that there is, you don't need to know all that. Okay, <laughs> they're about to. They were they're, they're, they're about to do something you're not supposed to do. Yeah, okay, okay. you guys get the idea. Mm. But anyway, so they didn't have any water. 
So um, he took the needle the guy had just used, used rainwater out of the gutter to prepare his thing, mm -hmm. you know, and he said, I knew when I was pushing that plunger mm -hmm. that I had just gotten AIDS. Mm -hmm. He said he knew the second he got it, mm -hmm. you know, which I, I personally <clears throat> believe is very, very spiritual there too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he, you know, he knew what he was yeah. doing was wrong. Yeah, he said and, he, he didn't care. Yeah, he didn't care and he much. said he just mm -hmm. didn't care, and he disobeyed God, and, mm -hmm. and he did that, and he ended up with AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, one thing I do have to say about him, he didn't go around crying about it all yeah. the time. Yeah, he was, no, he, oh, he, why he was kinda, AIDS feel bad for me? Yeah, yeah he was yeah. kind of, he, he could be, he would use it at times. Like one, one time, oh, yeah. someone, one time, someone, story. One yeah. time <laughs> someone stole a jar of Goob's uh, coffee, right? He had, a, he had a jar filled with like Maxwell House coffee or something. It's a like good that. strategy, someone, guys. Someone stole it. And uh, and all of a sudden it was count time. Anyone who wanted to yell something out at everyone to make an announcement, you do it right when the door closed after yeah. count time because everyone's, everyone's sitting there. And so uh, as soon as the door closed, you hear, hey, whoever stole my coffee... <laughs> Better check yourself before you wreck yourself. He goes, I have AIDS and I spit in it and I hope you get it. <laughs> he found his jar of coffee. not he found funny his jar of anybody's HIV positive. We're not laughing at that. Yeah. We're laughing at the end. We're laughing at yeah. Goob being funny. Yeah, using, using, funny. using this to his advantage. He found his coffee in a garbage can later. Yeah, later yeah at least he got day. his coffee yeah. back, you know. Yeah, so... Uh, so anyway, so that was anyway that was the last time I saw these dudes. Yeah, and it was just uh, it was just amazing that it was right then. It was like two hours after I after hey I'm gonna get my father after you. And, mm -hmm. then, and then last time I see I see any of these dudes. Um, so anyway, that was a uh, that was uh, sort of next. Certain things stand out in your mind more than the others. The other thing that stands out in my mind a lot before I left, <clears throat> because this is how I ended up leaving, was starting to get involved with Islam. Do you remember mm. Barnhill? Yes. We were both, oh, we were both yes. friends with, with Barnhill. Mm -hmm. um, Barnhill was my weightlifting partner for like five, six months. Uh, whenever we that could, we hit the gym. Is even more than that. Yeah, yeah, so, you guys hung out a lot, Yeah, actually. yeah. We, yeah. yeah we, so this is this is like the first mm -hmm. Muslim that I you know hung out with and talked to. He, yeah. was, he was the imam, the inmate imam yeah. mm -hmm. um, of the community there. And, I mean, uh, he never did me wrong. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, no, no, yeah, no. he was a nice guy. So I, I, I really, to this day, I like him. Now, he was in there. He shot a pastor and stabbed the pastor's wife while kidnapping the daughter and then converted to Islam when he got mm. locked up. So he actually had some, uh, some messed up. I actually looked it up when, when, yeah. when I was out to, and I actually found it. <laughs> but, um, um, so yeah, that's what Barnhill was in there for. Anyway, uh, I had a messed up past too. So we shared our stories. We ended up as weightlifting partners and we discuss, mm -hmm. um, Christianity and Islam. Um, so that's when I that's what, uh, I wasn't studying Muslim sources, but I was mm -hmm. I'd learn as I go right that they're they're handing out their Muslim tracks and stuff, and I would go look up what they're saying, and I actually respected Barnhill because, um, and you actually went and talked to him because mm -hmm. I found I, I found a track and they were talking about Bible verses and so on. And yeah, didn't they have something wrong or something? No, it was it was, it was the numbers. Remember, remember the numbers of, of 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 people that went out. They said, "Oh, it's a contradiction," and this yeah. is a contradiction, and yeah, we all know that. it's and, not and contradiction. One of the things yeah. was uh, Muhammad, and and suppose his Muhammad his, his was name. never mentioned yeah. in the Bible yeah. ever. I challenge anybody two hundred dollars find the name Muhammad in a King James Bible. This was and the, I'll give you two hundred dollars. This was the first <laughs> time I encountered the Muhammad and Song of Solomon argument. Because keep in mind I was it was mm -hmm. it was all new to me back then. And I went and looked up the word in um in a in a Bible dictionary. And yeah. then I, tr I tried to, to I tried roots. to tell him, but then you were breaking it down to him. You're like, mm -hmm. look, what, what's he what's he what's he wrong about? Here it is right here. This is not what it says. Yeah. And it was cool. Why I respected him was they stopped handing that out. They yeah. stopped handing that out, right? So, uh, well, it was a lie. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a, you know, that's one thing. I mean, uh, I got to say that most of the Muslims I had dealt with, at least there at Stanton and all, were halfway decent, you know, yeah. pretty good people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I didn't have any problems yeah. with them or anything. I mean, I mean, obviously, religiously, we're, yeah. <laughs> we weren't in, yeah. you know, lockstep. But but then uh, then some problems arose. Yeah. It started with Satterwhite. That's when things nope. got, started getting a little bit uglier. Yeah. You know. I mentioned, they always do. I mentioned Satterwhite earlier. Uh, Satterwhite was, uh, he was an ex-Nation of Islam guy. He was in there mm -hmm. for bank bank robbery and so on. Um, had been in the, the Nation of Islam. Um, now he was getting, he, he wasn't terribly old, but, he, you know, he was, 
He's what do you think, 50, early 50s, 50, something like that? 50s? I'd say about 50. Um, super nice guy, right? This guy had been, this guy been, yeah, this guy had been life, like a yeah. violent, angry young guy and became like the nicest Christian in the world. As far as the Christians mm -hmm. I've met, like, who were like the, the awesomest Christians I've met, that, that guy's top five. Yeah. Um, and so he's like the, the kind of leader of the Christian community. Well, there. he was yeah. a leader. I mean, yeah, basically, no, no was a leader of the that, Christian that, community. That, that man could have ordered me, David, go do this. And I would have, I would have, I would have gone and done yeah, it just because I, I had, like that, that, I had, that, much, I had yeah. that much respect for him. Anyway, Satterwhite, uh, uh, each of the main religious organizations had their own bulletin board mm -hmm. in the cafeteria area. Christians had the best one because they had it right where the line was. So where every where everyone who was going to breakfast, lunch, or dinner had to had to wait in line, the Christians had the bulletin board there, and ours was enclosed in plexiglass so that people, as they're standing behind it, you know, couldn't throw stuff on or something. Yeah, because like they like to vandalize <clears throat> stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. So Satterwhite had control of the Christian bulletin board. And mm -hmm. he posts this little note. It was, it was no, it was no bigger than this, right? On this right. giant bulletin board. And it just said, um, Hey, if you're reading this, there are many false paths. And he named some things and he said, Jehovah's witness, um, Islam. And he mentioned a couple of other things. And he said, said, he said, those are false paths, right? So that was it. That, that was, the, and he mentioned Islam because he was, he had been nation of Islam, right? So that was it. He, he posted that. And then all of a sudden, it was it was uh, it was gone, and so on. And I I was hearing, I heard people say that the Muslims had had surrounded Satterwhite on the on the ball field. So mm -hmm. uh, so we talked to Satterwhite, and he said basically about a dozen Muslims came up and, and surrounded him on the ball field, surrounded him on the ball field, and said, "Hey, you need to take that stuff down." And see, you know, there's a right and a wrong way to go about things. Like even if you want him to take that down, like I don't think you can consistently. You would be consistent. Into, I mean, your, your book, the Quran, is filled with commands to violently subjugate us and fight us until we pay you jizya and so on, all sorts of horrible things. So for you to just say, as a Christian, um, hey, Islam is false. Uh, yeah. I don't think you're. I don't think you could be consistent. Someone else who's not part of any of this conversation say, hey, quit being a jerk and, and messing with people. That's one thing. You guys, how how dare you put that up there? Uh, that's one. You thing, have but, to know the whole story. Yeah. You know, if it I had mean, been, if it, it had been like Barnhill, so he's the leader of the Muslims. Yeah. If it had been Barnhill coming up to them. Um, and saying, hey, I just want to pull you aside. We don't want any conflict here. We want to keep everything peaceful. So if you could, you know, take that down, that would be one thing. It was yeah. the fact that they surrounded him mm -hmm. uh, and like thugged out. And Sarah, well, it's that intimidation yeah. fact. You're in something that, that and, that's, and that they know it's like, the, and they know it's yeah. like the nicest guy in the world. He's like, look, man, they wanted me to, I'm not going to fight over this stuff. Um, so, so I took it down. So anyway, after that happened, keep in, keep in mind, my only interactions <laughs> with Muslims up until then are with Barnhill and I'm friends with him. I'm An explosive beginning, <laughs> and here it is. Yeah, so <laughs> another premiere. <laughs> so I told Satterwhite, I was like, "Look, just invent a new church position, person in control of the bulletin board, and make me in charge of that. Give me the key, because that there's a key, there's a lock, lock and key mm -hmm. and stuff." I said, "Make me in charge of that, and then next time they come and complain to you." You send them, you say, no, that's David Woods. I have nothing to do with that. David Wood is in, is in control of that. Mm -hmm. So Satterwhite says, okay. And he, he hands me the key. And so now I have control of the bulletin board. So <laughs> it's <was> funny. <laughs> so I drew this giant serpent, right? <laughs> this giant serpent head, right? With like these hypnotic eyes and the, the, and then like part of the body, the, the, the serpent was coming out of the, 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 the side of the bulletin board mm -hmm. right down to the middle. And then I put mm -hmm. a big word bubble there, and the serpent was saying, "Hiss, Jesus was just a prophet. Trust me, me. right?" <laughs> so anyway, I put that in the bulletin board and, and go ahead and lock, you know, lock it in there and stuff. And then the outcry I and I keep, was glorious. And then I keep, I keep, I keep, you know, everyone's seeing it because everyone who eats on the entire camp is uh, standing in Basically front of this thing. Basically, every person yeah. in that institution yeah. saw that. Yeah, is standing in front of that, right? About a thousand. And so, people. anyway, later, Satan. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> Satan was. Wait, <laughs> I called him Zach the Serpent. Zach the Serpent. Anyway, so Satterwhite eventually comes up to me and he said, like, "Up, oh, they they pulled, oh, they, they, came again. they surrounded me. They surrounded me on the ball on the ball field." I said, "Hey, it's not me. David Woods in charge of David Woods in charge of the." Uh, the bulletin board, right? So he told, so I told him, I told him it was you, man, and I was like, okay, yeah. So I thought either, either I'm just gonna get clocked, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be walking in and back, right? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get hit. Yeah. But what I was, I mean, so it was either that, or I was thinking that they're gonna surround me like they did Satterwhite. 
And yeah. I was just going to be like, okay, surround me. I'm like, I was going to be like, no, I'm not taking it down. Let me tell you about your profit. And then if they wanted to beat me down, they could, or mm-hmm. I was hoping to get into a, into a, you know, uh, argument with them, something like that. Uh, Cause they took me out. Keep in mind, I'm not, I wouldn't have done that if they hadn't done that to Satterwhite. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. like, Hey, I'm Dave go. wasn't the one who started the trouble. Yeah. He just finished it. Yeah. yeah basically. So, yeah. uh, so anyway, so here's where things got awesome. All right. So I think I'm either going to get clocked or, or they're going to surround me. I walk around for two days. I make sure I'm walking all over the place. No one ever messes with me, right? Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> anyway, then I get called in to the warden's office. I go in there. The warden has this stack of complaints about me and tells me that Muslims are complaining <laughs> they that I hurt their feelings and I'm, I'm, atta- I'm attacking them. them right? They snitched on and them. I would do it. I was shocked, right? <laughs> Wait, you guys just thugged out on Satterwhite. You thugged out on Satterwhite, but you complained to the warden about me? And never said a word to you. And and, and did, yeah, not a, not a word. Or right? to me. You figured it would have come to me, so you need to tell your boy to stop put, putting stuff up. They didn't even come to me about it. Yeah, yeah so, so nothing. So, so this was, I mean, this, guys, I don't know. If you if you know not if you learn nothing about prison from what we're yeah. saying here, don't ever don't, end up you there. <laughs> don't you don't run up to the you don't run and complain to the administration about another. No, you, you do not do no, that. No, 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 no. That, you do not do that. If if you look at like the the hierarchy, you know you have violent <clears throat> crimes up here, and then you know other crimes, and then down at the bottom you have child molesters, and then below yeah. child molesters you have snitches, right? Uh, you don't complain to the administration. <laughs> they did. They did. They went and complained to the administration. And I'm like, wait, you guys thug out on this dude, and then you whined to the you whined to the warden about me. So, what? Did I, so uh, the warden was cool. All he said was, just take that down, right? Take that down. Like I don't want to get anywhere. He I, came from a common no, sense no. angle. He was just, please, just no. take this down, make no. my life easier so, on me. So they caught, stopped coming to my office and bothering me. You know. Now here's where things. <laughs> now here's where things got awesome, right? <laughs> So I made this big sign for the bulletin board. Right. And, and my sign said, um, members of a certain religion <laughs> were apparently offended at our new character, Zack the Serpent. This is understandable. However, what is not understandable is that these members of this other religion didn't come to the person who runs the bulletin board, but instead complain directly to the warden about that inmate, right? And then it has this night, it has this little, uh, basically a little lecture on proper inmate mm-hmm. etiquette, right? You're supposed to go to that inmate, tell him, right? Uh, under no circumstances do you do you run and complain no, to the warden. involve administration. So I basically that, called yeah. all the guys who complain snitches in public. <laughs> and now everyone in the entire, in the camp who's standing in line, Call breakfast, out, breakfast lunch, and dinner yeah. is reading this going, and I'm huh. thinking, oh boy, I guess I'm going to get killed today. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, so I call all these guys. I call all these guys snitches, right? And uh, now I'm really expecting to get clocked. Right now I'm really expecting to to to, to get clocked over this. And uh, it still never happens. They never surround me. They never hit me. They never do anything. And I call them all snitches. What was interesting is, it was like the it was like the younger guys who were complaining to the administration, and they went. And complained to one of the older, older school Muslims who'd been locked up a long time. And, yeah, and told they him, took they're them like, the task. They're like, what, yeah. they're like, what, <laughs> what, he called us all snitches. And and the, the, the older guy was like, nah, he's well, right. Everything he's right, he, was, he, goes, everything yeah. he said was right. You were supposed to go to him. So that's, that's, that's cool. You know, um, he was actually, you know, the Christian got it right. So, um, so I had this sign up. And then after that's up for like two days, I don't remember if I got called in by the warden or the assistant warden, but... They had complained about that. Right? Yeah. They complained about that, that I was calling them snitches. And so I had to take that down. And at that time, I was like really ticked off, right? It's like, yeah. you guys are repeat offender snitches now. Yeah, complaining exactly. about exactly. Yeah, and talking about how tough you were the last place or the receiving you were yeah. and all that. But all you are is a snitch. Yeah. You and, know? <laughs> and, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying... I'm not trying to start anything. It's just, hey, you guys, if you if you want to thug out on Christians, just, just go ahead. I mean, here, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. here. What, what, what's the problem? So uh, then I really got ticked off. I had to take it down because that was that was being commanded to me by the administration. So I took it down. Well, man's law. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm, I'm walking around and I'm, I'm still expecting to get clocked and they still just completely ignore me. Hmm. And so finally they called their, their weekly meeting for Masjid Muslims <laughs> on Friday. And I was like, screw this. I'm going down there, right? So I go into there. It, it's the, they're in the cafeteria. There's no there's no guard or anything there. It's the just it's jihad just like meeting. it's just like twenty <laughs> it's like twenty to twenty five yeah. Muslims in prison in the cafeteria for their meeting, which is being led by Barnhill. 
I don't, I don't, I don't go in there to disrupt anything. I'm like, hey, you, you got, you guys keep running the administration. If you got, a, if you got a problem, I'm going to make myself available to you to actually say something if you want right. to say something. To feel walked, a complaint. Yeah, or whatever, I walked yeah. right into the middle of the entire group and just sat out, right. And I just stand there and I watch their entire meeting. None of them will even look mm -hmm. at me. None of them will even look, will even look in my direction. And I'm like, what is go what is going on yeah. here? Right? I'm expecting <laughs> to get my face smashed in. Yeah, you're and these guys will not touch. Kind of these guys reaction. will not, yeah. not touch me. They thug out on everyone else and not on me. Right? I'm like, what? Is what is going on here? Anyway, um, <clears throat> it wasn't too long. So anyway, we finished the meeting. I got up and I got up and left and so on. Okay. It wasn't long after that they I got removed from that prison, sent to another prison. And it was because mm -hmm. there were so many complaints that David was going to get David was going to get hurt if they did not get out. So they actually took me out of the prison because of threats against me. And I left there. I'm like, are you kidding me? You thug out on the nicest Christian in the world. I give you an opportunity to thug out on me. You complain to the administration. Yeah. And then when I don't back down and you it can't get your way, to say. You, yeah. you, 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 you make you, you make threats to me so that I get removed and, and sent to another sent to another prison. Um, so I, was well, like, I hate to gosh. say whoever made that decision really made a bad decision because, uh, yeah, you've been uh, pretty much uh, uh, taking care of business ever since. <laughs> consequences. 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 Every action has a reaction. Just yes, remember yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. anyway, so anyway, that's when I ended up leaving Stanton. Yeah. And then we didn't see each other again until. Well, yeah, it was a few years. I visited years you later. at your dad's. Um, a couple times, I think, there. I don't know. It's just been off and on. But we usually, it's funny, man, because it goes like years, and then we get in touch with each other after a year, and then it's like we pick up the conversation that we were having a year ago. You know, that's always been the good thing between us is we've had that good rapport, you know. And um, I, I owe a lot of my... Um, should I say my morality, I guess, or whatever, a lot to Dave here. Um, you know, Dave always used to check me, uh, you know, uh, anger and um, wrong responses to anger is one of my biggest problems. Uh, Dave called me when we were in prison, called, called, called me out several times, you know, about that, you know, about learning to control myself, learning to control my tongue, you know, stuff, uh, you know, there's a right time and a wrong time you know, to do things like even witnessing and things like that. You just, especially as a new Christian, you want to go out and tell the world. You want to go out and tell every, you want to tell bunny rabbits, you know what I mean? It, it just it is so like inspiring, you know, and stuff. And I remember, you know, a couple tough lessons on approaching people that just weren't ready to hear, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, so, and of course I didn't want it to make, make it go, make me go back to my old self by reacting to how, whatever they said or did or whatever, you know, and stuff. So, I mean, Dave definitely showed me some wisdom while we were in there, you know, and stuff about, you know, about, about assessing situations a little bit better, especially spiritually and making the right decisions, you know, yeah, and, and that's and, important. And, and the weird part is. Like the, the the weird part, like I look back on that and was like, what was I thinking a lot of the times, right? Mm -hmm. But for prison, I was like a nice guy. Yeah. You get out here, and I'm like the biggest jerk. In, I'm considered the biggest jerk in the world because of the, because of the different environments. Right. But I, you know, I look back on a lot of stuff that I did, and I can't say, hey, I did the right thing. Um, I can't say I did that the, the wrong thing in, in, most, in, most, in yeah. most of those situations. But you know, like slapping goob in the head. You know, it's just it seemed like the thing to do at the time. But you know, I, you know. Uh, that's some, that's something that now yeah. I, I certainly would not um, would not slap someone in the head, but it does it does bother me that all this the stupid stuff I would do. Yeah, because and and this is going back to when I was in jail before I was a Christian, there would be no point to it whatsoever except to like like. I, but that's I, what brought you to Christianity. Yeah. Well, think about think about this. Like, I there mean, was, it was you know if you think about it directly. <laughs> In in the, uh, the 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 jail I was in, uh, we, we were in a dorm there, and there was a there was a marine there who was fighting all the time. He like he had like a uh, uh, like a hair trigger temper. Yeah, uh, marine. He had death before dishonor tattoo down his arm and stuff like that. Uh, he would always he was always talking about his his uh, his pit bulls and and stuff and how he mm -hmm. would fight with his pit bulls and stuff. Anyway, uh, he was there doing freestanding squats. He's just squatting right, and I'm walking right by him and I go. 
his nickname was Pac-Man, right? Because he he he, he yeah. would take it, take the leftover food off everyone's tray. <laughs> you know, he's working out all, all day, doing push-ups and 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 squats and stuff. Protein and push-ups. Yeah, protein so I, and push-ups. I was yeah. still an atheist at this time, but I'm just trying to show you, like, you can't, you don't understand how I should have gotten my my head stomped in multiple. Now back then, I would I would have just I would have just fought. Um, I wouldn't have fought I wouldn't have fought the Muslims if they if they'd surrounded me. I would have I would, yeah. put, I would have put my hands up and, and let them smash my face in. Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not against. Self, I'm difference. not against. I'm not against self defense. In that in that situation, I would have. I would not. I would not have fought back. Uh, if someone's storming There's your house, if someone's storming your house situations. in the middle of the night, you, you yeah. know, pr protect your family, guys. Um, but uh, in, in so Pac Man is sitting there doing these freestanding squats. This Marine, I walk right by him and I go, "That's right, Pac Man, sit on that mm. penis." But you know the D word, right? So. Hey Pac Man, sit on that D, right? And I walk right by him, right? And, like, and as I'm walking, I thought that was funny, right? I thought that was a funny thing to say, Even right? Even I didn't say that. Uh, yeah. My goodness, it crazy. made that's the point. It made no sense. Uh, yeah, I had nothing against this dude. I just wanted to. I thought it would be funny to to see him flip out, but not like he would be flipping out on me, right? Yeah. And I'm so I'm walking away, and he flips out, and he comes over like he's about to grab, me, and I start cracking up, laughing like I think it's hilarious that he's coming after me after this. When he could have just started, you know, wailing on my face, and then we ended up fighting and stuff. But yeah. the point is, there was no point to any of that. There's no point yeah. to any of that, and a lot of that went away after I became a Christian. But it would be certain circumstances, like after I left Stanton, and they sent me to. A much worse place so i went to i went to saint brides and uh like half the dorm i was in in saint brides were five percenters right <clears throat> oh it was known for that yeah, yeah so that's right so like guys if you don't know uh, the five percent is an offshoot of the nation of islam that teaches that the black man is god and the white man is the devil that was well, grafted by this. Con, yeah. you know it's that yeah yeah um that, no that was uh it wasn't that was uh Clarence thirteen X, I think, was the was the offshoot and so on. But yeah, it was really, really no nation of Islam. Na yeah, that's Farrakhan. nation of Islam yeah. is Farrakhan. The oh, offshoot, but the five percent yeah, were the offshoot. Yeah, they, they, they were the, were the militant. They yeah. were the militant. Arm so like half this dorm is five percenters. Right. Anyway, um, uh, I had this uh, this Mexican guy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know his real name. Everyone called him Amigo. I called him Amigo. Other people well, called makes, him. Makes people so would call him like every. People would call him like every. Like Mexican name, they call him Julio, Jose, whatever you know. Hola. Uh, yeah, and some oh, yes. <laughs> some people would call him a different name every day, right? Yeah, but we all knew because he was the only he was the only Mexican there. He was pretty cool. Dude. Anyway, um, I would take him to uh, he would so at St. Bride's he would I for a while he was going to church with me and stuff. And one day I heard him at the other end of the dorm when someone is saying, "Hey man, you need to, you need to calm down." He's like. He started cursing God, right? He's like, what's that? What's that MF ever done for me? Blah, 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 blah. And mm. I'm sitting there and I go, I go, uh, hey, uh, hey, amigo, you can't, uh, you can't, you shouldn't be coming to church with me anymore if you're going to be talking to, talking to, talking about God like that. So, uh, why don't you just go ahead and join the 5%, right? And the whole half the dorm goes, whoa, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, like, why'd you bring us into this, right? And so it was, it was that kind of situation. And, Damn, my boy uh, really see that. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. and and then and I'm then those, those dudes one. later they went to a different dorm, and it was a situation where they they'd go up and they'd tell a dude hand over your stuff, and if you don't, they would they would beat you down and take your stuff. Right? Yeah, I was heard St. Bride's was, was uh, classic for that when you yeah. filled your locker up. Yeah, they come up they and pull yeah, your yeah. locker. This out. idiot yeah, goes in there. He's brand that, he's, yeah. he's brand new. He fills up his locker and they come, they roll up on him and they yeah. So they you know they. Some some guys don't have anyone sending them money. This guy does, and it's you know it's kind of yeah. like it, it looks like you're throwing it in their face. Hey, I've got a locker full of stuff. So they take, they go over there to take all his stuff, and he he tries to he tries to stand up for himself, and they just beat that guy senseless. Anyway, you start hearing about it, people coming back, because everyone starts scrambling because they don't want to get in trouble. And I'm like, okay, all these guys are from my dorm going over there, and they just beat this dude up, and they're all about yeah. to come back with all you know they're, they're about to come back to this dorm. And and the, there was a there was a spot where the walkway was pretty narrow, right? It's like yeah. you know, big enough for 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 you know to like squeeze by each other. And I was like, I'm just gonna go stand there right in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just gonna just stand there. Right? Let's see what happens. And see if they go yeah. see if they go see around they me. Mill around see if they go, go around me you. when they're all when they're all like you know they're they're in, they're in fight mode and stuff. All radicalized and ready. It's because yeah. by this time I'm like, why am I not getting my face beat in ever? I uh, uh, you know. And so I go up there, and I just stand there. And sure enough, every last one of them comes through the door, dripping with sweat and stuff like that. And and they, they get to me and they sort of just just pause, and then they go around me. All right, and I'm like, what what is going on here, right? Because like 
So I have a, I probably have it here somewhere. Um, I have a Ryrie study Bible. It's not in here. I have a Ryrie study Bible that was my study Bible in prison. And yeah, down there, so it's a big thick Bible. And I wrote, I wrote hundred percenter down the side of it, right? And so I had that sitting on my headboard. So it was like a little thing. It said hundred percenter. Right? <laughs> and they'd ask me, they go, what do you mean hundred percenter? And I go, well, you know, as a Christian, we can't be settling for anything less than a hundred percent. You know, as a Christian, I can't be settling for 90 or 95 percent you know <laughs> five i even yeah. said i would go i would go five what is five is that i thought that was like a kind of milk <laughs> right and to this day i don't i don't know i don't know five percent milk buy it <laughs> yeah i don't know i screwed with people the entire time i was locked up uh never never got uh never got hurt at all well, you remember my prankster uh, habits, you know, I was caught. That was one of my biggest problems and stuff. I, I got bored in prison. So I would pull pranks on people or pull jokes on them, whatever. Some got out of hand. Uh, time I gave Billy Bro the cigarette that was full of uh, hot chili peppers. I didn't realize he had asthma. Oh, wow. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's like when you got a call, you know, the, they called the guard really quick because he's you know about to die outside. Oh, wow. I was trying to prank him, you know. But it's the same thing, though. I, I had mentioned, actually, to my fiancé the same thing, that the entire time that I was in prison, I never got seriously hurt. And it was a significant amount of time in prison. And, I, you know, I mean, as far as hands being laid on me or anything, I did the laying on. They didn't do the laying on. You know, God always had his hand on me while I was in prison. I do have to say that. That even before, you know, I rededicated my life, you know, to the Lord, you know, there were so many times, I mean, walking on Key Mountain Yard and hearing the screams of, I can't wait to get you, white boy, and all the mm -hmm. other stuff, you know, the usual stuff you hear, yeah. you know. And and then never have a, a single hand laid on you. I mean, like you're talking about, people actually walk around you rather than deal with you, that kind of thing. I mean, it's real. I mean, it is real. And we were in probably the worst situation you get yourself in the United States. United States prisons are known worldwide, you know, as being, you know, just really bad places don't don't believe the hype on tv trust me mm. you know the main thing is you know that, that that you know that i experienced a very similar thing you know as dave did you know that the lord always had his hand on me and he always protected me always kept me safe from harm you know and and i that you know all i could be is appreciative and thank you and thankful for that you know mm. Um, a quote, uh, I don't know if any of you guys ever watched Trailer Park Boys or not, but there's a quote, uh, there's a character in it called, uh, who's named Jim Leahy, he's the one who's the head of the trailer park or whatever, uh, but he had passed away here just a couple of years ago, and he made a special clip after the show, um, you know, was, was done with the season, and what he said, and I think it's a really, really good quote, is um, that the greatest currency is gratitude. And that's something I think all of us need to be thankful of. I mean, every night when you go to sleep, every morning when you wake up, you should be thankful that the Lord woke you up. You should be thankful that the Lord protects you while you're sleeping. And we were in a place where being protected while you were sleeping was a real thing. It wasn't a brown recluse spider. It was 30 people who wanted to kill you, you know, or something. It was a lot more extreme, you know. And, you know, if... We were able to make it through, you know, I mean, some. It, it, we haven't even gotten into the real good stories. I guess we'll save that for another time. But, you know, um, you know, God always did protect us, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, the whole thing with Oaks and everything else, mm -hmm. um, that was a huge statement on the yard. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew about it. Everybody knew about it. And they saw what happened to him. And that brought a lot of people into the church. And I'm not saying that hurting, that, that, the, that the hurtful things that someone goes through, you know, or something like that to drive them or make other people come to church is right. I'm just saying it just, it was a perfect storm, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and to be honest with you, I, I still to this day am and just blown away by what happened, how immediate the consequences mm -hmm. were. You know, I mean, because I mean, Dave, Dave, were, I mean, we, we were, we were sold out for Christ then. I mean, we, we, yeah, we witnessed to, you know, people that were ready to listen. You know, we tried our best to get, 
you know, souls in those pews and stuff. And uh, we both were baptized there, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, baptized in a big steel mm -hmm. tub. Imagine a huge, big steel washing tub. Cold, That's cold water. Ice cold water. <laughs> and it was wintertime. Yes. <laughs> and, and it really kind of sucked, you know, stuff being dunked in that water. But when coming out of that water and, and knowing that public had not, you know, kind of that public announcement to the world that you know you're one of god's children i'll tell you what i didn't even feel the cold water when i came up i mm -hmm. felt so good i felt reborn you know mm -hmm. i guess being born again being the key reference to that you know mm -hmm. and if we could do it in prison anybody could do it mm -hmm. out here i mean come on now yeah. you know no we've been going uh, over an hour and a half <clears throat> there is another Has it been that long? there is another interesting topic oh, wow. that i'd like to discuss that uh, I don't think enough. I don't. I don't think it's really been addressed sufficiently because you're talking about being sold out and so on. Mm -hmm. And you and a number of the best Christian brothers I've ever had mm -hmm. got out and then got locked back up, and including Satter, including Satterwhite. Again, yeah. one of the top, one of the one of the, the most one Christians of the you've ever met in my life. Ever. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> there is there is this attitude I've seen in lots of people where okay, you're a Christian when you're locked up, and then you go back to screwing up when you get out, and so you were just you were just faking. Whereas it's I, the I, temptations, it's the it's, it's actually it's, it's a, the it's overdrive. A lot of it's yeah. the overdrive of suddenly yeah. you're able to do anything you yeah. want when you come from a situation <clears throat> where you weren't able to do anything you want. It's a uh, yeah. It's it's a it's a number of factors. Anyway, um, to seriously address it, I think uh, would take a little bit. But maybe before you uh, before you head out, maybe we'll jump on. Is that something you guys would like to see? Why uh, why you have inmates who are sold out for Christ and then they get out and end up locked back up and so I'd on? I'd certainly because... like to explain myself on that because it is it is a worthwhile story to listen to. Mm -hmm. And also kind of a warning, too, about how easy it is to backslide, mm -hmm. how easy it is to get away from the Lord, because we are surrounded out here with so many distractions, so many you know, deceptive things, you know, I mean, and real things and stuff, you know, when you're in, when you're in prison, you're able to focus, you know, that you're able to focus directly on your Christianity and work on it. When you're out here, you have to work. You have to take care of your kids. You have a mortgage to take care of, you know, things like that. And then you get it maybe back into some old habits or things like that. Now, unfortunately, that's what happens to a lot of people getting out. Thus, the high recidivism rate, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you can see right here, see all the yeses? Yeah. These, okay. are, all the, these are all the people when I, when I asked... Uh, um, Fine, great. Ships, yeah, you know, if you guys want to, it's, wanted, it's all more, yeses, right? and then uh, there, there are some uh, more cane, <laughs> more cane. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Ariva. Arriva. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, um, if we if we get a chance, we'll go live <laughs> again. <times. laughs> uh, we'll go live again probably tomorrow. Probably won't be at the same time because one of my sons has uh, rustling at this normal time. So it might be a little bit, uh, later than we started tonight, but yeah, we will, uh, Lord willing, we will go live again tomorrow and looking forward to it. Yeah. And, uh, we will discuss why inmates get locked back up. Call it the Christian recidivism session. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, everyone here, look, hey, oh, what, there we go. Whether, Thank you guys. <laughs> whether, uh, whether you agree with us or not on any issues, uh, just know we love you guys. We want the best for everyone. And, and we so, will pray for you and we love you. And we encourage all of you to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Catch y'all later. Peace. <laughs>